Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to write and solve a differential equation for the velocity as a function of time for an object that's moving with a resistive force acting upon it. So in AP Physics C uh, mechanics we have to use calculus um, differentiation and integrals in the kinematics unit and we can derive our kinematics equations using calculus. So one of the important derivatives that we are going to be using in this uh, video here in this practice problem that we're going to be doing is recognizing that acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So we're going to use this along with integration to solve this problem. So let's get into it. All right, so in this problem, we have an object of mass m moving along a flat surface with an initial speed v0. And as it moves, a resistive force equal to negative kV is applied to the object. We're going to write and solve a differential equation, like I said, for the velocity as a function of time. Uh, and the reason that we need to actually use a differential equation here is because our force, uh, is, it's not constant. Okay, so this force is not constant. And we can tell because in this expression here, there's this linear relationship between the force and velocity. The larger the velocity is, the greater the force is going to be. So we can't use any of our constant acceleration kinematics equations. We are going to have to create an expression for uh, the acceleration because that force is not constant. All right, and so just actually also another side note too, is that if we're going to be writing a differential equation, something that we're going to be seeing in that equation is something like um, dv dt or dx dt. Those are parts of a differential equation. So we're going to have to figure out how we can introduce that into an expression um, for the motion of this object. And so we can imagine here, if we wanted to start off with a nice simple sketch, we could have an object moving to the right with this initial speed. Uh, v naught and that force is acting in the opposite direction of motion and so we can apply Newton's second law here and that net force again so that's the one that's equal to negative kV that is our net horizontal force so that net horizontal force would be equal to the mass of this object times its acceleration and on the left hand side of our equation here, we can replace net force with the expression negative kV. And on the right hand side, we have mass times acceleration, which like I mentioned before, is the time derivative of velocity. So that's where we're getting in there a, uh, a differential equation is the presence of this term. So this is something that we're going to solve all the way through for an expression for v or v of t incorporating the variables that are given to us in the problem. So we notice here in the problem we're given this mass m, we have this expression for the force negative kV, and we have this initial velocity here. So those are all things that need to be part of our equation or our expression at the end. All right, so what we're going to do here is take this expression that we've come up with and separate our variables out so that on one side we have v and dv, and on the other side we have everything else, which is k, m, and dt, okay? So I'm going to move the mass and dt over to the left and v over to the right to get the expression negative k over m times dt is equal to dv over v. Okay, and I want to move things specifically that way rather than moving dv to the left and k to the right because it's easier for us to have dv up here at the top or in the numerator of this fraction rather than in the bottom. And so from that step, Here's where integration comes in. So we're going to integrate both sides from the initial velocity to some velocity v. So this is not anything too crazy here in terms of integrals. Um, we 
have on the left hand side a constant that we can pull out of there. Okay, so negative k over m would be a constant. So then we just have this super, super simple integral of dt. And then on the right hand side, there's not really kind of any way we can simplify that, guys, but I'm just going to write that in another way that you may recognize a little bit more, although it's like, you know, very obviously the same thing here, but 1 over v dv. We can also write that that way. And you may recognize the integral of 1 over x as being the natural log of x. So let's go ahead and just simplify these out. So negative k over m and then the integral of dt would just be t and as I mentioned a moment ago the uh, integral of 1 over v dv is the natural log of v okay so again we're not done yet because we really have to get ourselves an expression here for the velocity at any time t. So we have to continue on to write this side out a little further for our expression, um, substituting v in there and substituting v naught in there. Um, of course, on the left-hand side, because we have t and not v, there's nothing to substitute in, so we're gonna leave that alone. So negative k over m times t stays on the left. But now we have the natural log of v minus the natural log of v naught. And here's where we need to know our, our rules for natural logs because we can simplify that here to the natural log of v over v naught. Okay, and again, we can't leave it this way. We have to take it a step further. So we are going to now uh, take each of those sides of our equation and put those things that we see here up as exponents of e because we want to get rid of the natural log. And if we take e to the natural log of something, um, we're just going to get what is in parentheses there. Okay, so on the left hand side, we have e to the negative k over m times t. And that leaves us on the right hand side with just v over v naught. All right, guys, so when we rearrange that, we want to rearrange that for v. So nice and simple, we get v naught times e to the negative k t over m. Okay, and this v here, that is the velocity with respect to time. So if we want to rewrite that just to look a little bit more like a function, we can rewrite that this way. And there we have it. We have our final expression for the velocity as a function of time. And just to summarize our process here, what we had to do first was recognize that Newton's second law is important to us because Newton's second law tells us that we have this net force of the magnitude that they're giving to us. We have this little expression here for what our net force is equal to. So we can substitute that in on the left-hand side of our equation. We substitute dv dt in for a, which makes our equation a differential equation. And then we can integrate that expression because we don't wanna leave dv and dt in there. We wanna get an expression for v. So we go through that process here and that's our final answer. All right, guys, so I hope that that was a helpful review for you or maybe just an introduction to an application of where we can use calculus in this course. Um, so we are going to continue on and see a couple more videos with some other various applications because throughout this course we see calculus pop up um, and be useful in pretty much every chapter at some point. Um, so take a look out for some of those types of videos coming up.